everyone, Unlimited Ammo here with a guide and playthrough on how to unlock the Quaylog in Magicite. Quaylog is an interesting character, he gets plus 2 dexterity and plus 2 attack. So he's. Okay, he can be a warrior, he can be an archer, he also starts with a bug net to catch bugs, make magic wands and weapons. So he's kind of an all around character. Interesting character, I'm not sure where his role, what his niche is, what his role is. It's kind of a generalist character, similar to the Earthkin. And he can be. For some reason, you're having trouble getting the Gooey Ghost and getting legendary swords because you can't find enough bugs. I guess the Quaylog can help you do that because he starts with the bug net. So the Quaylog is a solid choice for doing that if you're having trouble with it, but it's really not hard to do anyway. So I'm not sure where this guy, where the Quaylog quite fits, but you unlock him after beating the game without crafting anything. So no shift clicking, combining anything at all. You have to just have to use what you find. That makes archery completely out of the question because you can't make your own arrows, so. You're not gonna be doing any archery for this. That's 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 not gonna happen. Magic is unlikely because you can't make your own wands or magic weapons. You can only use what you have or find. So starting with magic weapons, you have the remnant, starts the bolt bolt magic, which is not a bad spell, but it's more situational and can be kinda of hard to use sometimes. The gin, it's possible, fire wand shoots fireball straight in front of you, you can use it for any situation. But the gin is very difficult to unlock, but if you have them, feel free to use them, try to use magic. He also has a, a filibuster, powerful melee weapon, he starts with it, and you find other melee weapons as you go through, so the gin's a fine choice. But I'll highly recommend just doing this melee, because you're going to find weapons and armor that that encourage that playstyle. So you have, a, I'll recommend the bandicoot, the starting rings are very powerful, he gets a little extra attack. The extra dexterity is wasted, but the extra attack at the beginning more than makes up for that. So I recommend the bandicoot. If you don't like the Bandicoot for whatever reason, then the Orclops or Crusader, they're fine too. The bonus stack help you help you in your melee style. You're going melee because you don't have to craft anything. You can find strong melee weapons and treasure chests. That's the most common type of weapon that you can find. You can find laser swords, fiddle busters, obsidian swords. All sorts of good weapons you can just find. Don't worry about crafting them. So melee is the most reliable way to do this and easiest. We're going to go for the purpose of the playthrough. We're going to choose our peon. And give him the frizzy hair, hat wise. You have a lot of choices here actually. You can take. I have a difficulty recommending anything really. You can take bunny ears, bat wing, wasp glasses, more mobility. You can take overworld down if you have it, take less damage. You can take a tiki mask for healing or the. If you're going to do magic, of course you have wizard beard, frost crown, magician hat. But I would recommend. We're doing melee. We're playing it through. I would recommend Berserker Scarf. That's a solid. It's a solid choice because you're also going to be getting a lot of your power from leveling up because you're not getting equipment, you're not crafting anything. So all your power is going to be from level ups. So Berserker Scarf is a good choice for that. So that's what we're going to be taking. It's also a low level unlock that we can that I can safely take and assume many people have. So take the Berserker Scarf companion wise. I'll flame my hope. <laughs> right now it is so strong it just beats out every other companion unless you're trying to do something specific or really enjoy using one of the other companions. Flame of hope is miles ahead of all of them combined. So Flame of Hope, always, forever, everything you do ever right now, until it gets nerfed. Because you get extra point in every stat, every level. It's insane. We're not gonna be taking it for our playthrough, but I see no reason why you would ever want to not take that if you're just trying to complete the game without a specific without a very specific different strategy you need to use, such as the gin unlock. Check in extra attack and a little extra health. That's the only stats that we're going to be using for this. So healthy and aggressive, so we rolled, we're keeping it. Uh, the gatherer stats, like... Extra, we're going to grab a little bit of wood. We don't need it. At all. We just really just have it. You get out of these traps, I, I swear. <laughs> these forest traps. Started with nothing... Like, important iron ore. Can't craft. Arrow we can't craft, so that's all useless. You're going to be killing everything, because like I said, a lot of your power is going to be coming from just level ups. So we're going to be killing things to try and get levels here. And don't worry about using your tools as a weapon, because you're not going to be... Your tool is a weapon in this, <laughs> in this case, because you're not going to be gathering anything, because you don't need to... You don't need to craft anything, so you don't need resources, you don't need to worry about preserving your tools. So you can just use your axe as a weapon, freely, without worrying about the durability. Babysitting the durability, don't need to nurse that. Because you're not getting trees, you don't need sticks and woods unless you really want some gold. 
which is a perfectly viable strategy to spend your time chopping as many trees as you can for gold. Gives you an opportunity to buy things that show up in the store that you can't otherwise get. I'm not doing that because it's a big time sink, and we're doing a, doing a playthrough here for you. We don't want to sit here and spend 20 minutes chopping every single tree I see. But you do want to kill- oh, that was bad. That was risky. You do want to kill every enemy you see. A lot of your power is coming from this experience. From these level ups. And it's really tempting to craft those herbs into potions, because everyone loves potions. You can make mistakes, take some damage, drink a potion, it's like it never happened. But you really gotta resist that because obviously you craft something, craft a potion, you're not gonna get your quail log. So do not do that. No crafting. Very strict. Also cannot craft NPCs, just no crafting whatsoever. Uh, we got very good spawns these bosses. And we're also going to take our warrior skills, that's what we're doing. It's a warrior build. Try to get damage. Throwing axe is a lucky skill to get too, because it's so good. Give us a ranged option, even though we're going all melee. Really? Oh, he bounced into me from the, from the trap. It really is all melee, unless we find a laser crossbow. It's the only way we'll be able to do any range damage. Otherwise, we could. I mean, technically, we could find a pre strung bow and find some arrows and shoot those, but that would be pretty absurd to try to do. Just to shoot a few arrows. The bow that we found. Okay, no, we don't need anything. We can sell all of it. He's not crafting anything. So, this is all. The only thing we need? Raw meat. Probably. That's probably the only thing we need. Can't craft a fire starter. You need to find a fire starter. Don't be afraid to eat your uh, food raw if you have to. You don't get any healing, you only get one hunger, but food is plentiful. And we can buy oh, one more dollar, we buy iron sword. So we're going to go sell one of these foods, get that iron sword. And if we were doing the strategy where you chop down as many trees as possible for money, then we wouldn't need to sell that food, we would have enough money from the trees. So that's kind of why you chop down all the trees you can to get extra money. Just to buy swords when they show up. But we got lucky, we had enough money anyway. I don't even need this grass, because <laughs> we can't craft anything. That does make the playthrough go rather quickly though, because you're fighting a lot, but you're not crafting, you're not gathering resources. So the playthrough does go rather rather fast. Which is nice. You can earn this pretty quickly. Come on, get out of here. You're gonna kill everything you see. You need that experience, you want those level ups. Or now oh, come here boy. Bah. I would no, I do not recommend hitting boars in the face. But I knew that one that boar was one hit away from death and I was very confident we could hit it without taking any damage. So I did. If I got hit from doing that, I would have I would have called myself out on breaking my own rule and hitting a boar in the face. It happens. Just this iron sword and a couple levels. We're already doing pretty decent damage. I mean, 17 is not great, but for this forest biome, it's, it's sufficient. We're getting very lucky with these bosses. You want these boss spawns because they give you lots of experience, and lots of experience makes you very powerful. But we do not want to fight Percy because he has a ton of health. He's one of the higher health bosses in the game. We just don't have the damage to work him down right now. It's going to take far too long. So we're just going to we're just going to walk right past him. I would encourage you, if you do have the time and skill and you're ready to go back and fight Percy, you can do it. But I know we don't need to do that, and I do not want to stand here and smack this penguin around for 20 minutes. So just moving on. And again, you can sell everything, which is kind of painful to sell all these herbs, it feels wrong. Hey, we found a health potion, which is great. You will find healing items and food, so not being able to craft anything is not a big deal. So even though we're kind of low on hunger, just eat some food. I don't keep slaughtering all livestock, so it's not a big deal. Just get all the meat back, even though it's inefficient because it's not cooked yet. I don't need that grass. I need to break these habits here. Eating uncooked is inefficient, but it's all right because we have so much. You get so much food in the game. It's not a big deal. And you can find fire starters in chests. Finding things in chests is a big part of this. This unlock. Another penguin, man. Maybe should have killed the other penguin. 
We do have a little bit more damage now. What's our durability? 42. We have 19 damage. Ah, it just takes so long. I don't want to deal with him. Stop chasing me. Okay, maybe I will deal with him. Nope, okay, he's gone. He's almost now. Like I said, if you can fight Percy, if you want to invest the time, it's worth it. He gives lots of experience. But I still, I'm still making a video here. I don't want to spend all that time dancing with that penguin. As much as he is taunting me. Okay, almost got hit by a trap there. A ring, Archer's ring is useless for us. But a cooked, cooked chicken is not. You don't need to eat it right now, though. All these herbs, the game is taunting me with all these herbs. Saying wouldn't these as health potions be fantastic? He would have so much health. That's alright, we don't need it. Do not take damage. Just another penguin, this is absurd. I feel like the uh, spawn rate of bosses has been increased secretly. They're noticing a lot of stuff like this. Ooh, guess where we're going? The caves. You want to go to the caves because it gives a lot of experience. Particularly when you fight the Broodmillers. And also, the uh, monsters there, the enemies drop lots of health potions. It's an easy way to stack up on health potions, surprisingly. Don't not have enough money for a diamond sword, so we're just moving on. We can eat our chicken now. Yeah, a little bit of healing off of it. Isn't that nice? Oh, they dodged my axe. It's kind of fun that the cave, cave enemies are so good at dodging your throwing axe. Let myself get hit there, that was bad. It happens though. I don't want to break these eggs. So we want to fight a Scourge Mother. Hey, one's already. I want to fight a Broodmiller. It said Scourge Mother. That's not what they're called. That would be awfully scary, wouldn't it? I want to fight these these Broodmillers because they're not difficult to fight. Their behavior is predictable, they just go straight at wherever you're standing. And they don't have a ton of health. Like a couple hundred health. Oh, got hit there. It's fine, because we are finding health potions. We're up to four health potions, so even without crafting anything, we've already had four health potions. It's important to remember, you cannot combine the health potions. That counts as crafting, and you will fail. So you have to take them as small potions, or however you find them. Weapon's about to break. That's a shame. It means no more Broodmillers, because we don't have the weapon for it. So how much... There we go. So that really puts a damper in our damage output, not having a sword. That's alright, you can go through, you still get lots of experiences from the regular enemies in the cave. So you don't have to, even going to the cave and not fighting the Broodmillers, killing the regular enemies still gives a decent amount of experience. Don't stress yourself out about it, if you don't have a weapon, you can't kill the Broodmillers in a reasonable amount of time. Killing the bats in one hit though is fantastic, I'll tell you that. You have to not so stressful to fight then. They fly at you and you hit them. Let's let's get to the end and then we'll summon Broodmillers. Because I don't want to get a bunch going and realize I can't kill them in time and I just have to make a run for it and miss all the all the regular monsters. So we're gonna ignore it for now, go to the end, and then break a few in the final couple rooms. And fight those broodmillers. Wait, we incidentally break some, we're not gonna we're not going to stress ourselves out about it. Give me your bat and get over here. Yeah. Important note, your throwing axes do not break the eggs. There you go. Got that guy out. Bats, once you get close enough, you'll trigger them. Once they're triggered, they'll go to where... Oh, I'm actually supposed to summon a broodmother. They'll go to where you are. Get close and they'll come at you and you just hit them again. It's important to remember they hesitate. You'll be in their range and they hesitate before they start coming at you. Once they've noticed you, they'll still take a moment to come towards you. It's breaking lots of eggs here. We're gonna have a gonna have a run in with uh, some broodmillers here soon. Yep, there it is. We're going to ignore you. See you later. I got speed, so we're gonna away if we need to. Take some potions. Could take a little bit of damage. And that's our exit. Another cave. Hopefully, we're going to go to the Velt, however. We want to find the Jelly Blade. I'm going to pull these guys back. Jelly Blade isn't required, of course. There's lots of places you can get powerful weapons. 
but the Jelly Blade in the Velt is one of them, and it's worth pursuing. If the opportunity presents itself, come over here so I can kill you. I'd be greedy for this experience. Let's go to the Velt. Get us a Jelly Blade. 100 damage weapon, very powerful. Very useful to have. Still no fire starters. We can buy a gold sword. It's almost certainly worth it. Especially as opposed to having no weapon. Now going to the caves for experience or the velt for jelly blade can be kind of a toss-up. Because you do get getting experience is very powerful. And you're guaranteed to get, you know, some fair amount of experience going to the cave. But if you go to the belt, getting a now, getting a jelly blade is very strong. You're not guaranteed to get a jelly blade. They drop frequently, but not not enough to say you're guaranteed to get one from these jellyfish. Of course, that's where the jelly blades drop from, or jellyfish. So you gotta kill all those guys. Kind of tricky in melee sometimes because the way they fly and they have range attack that acts in a unique fashion. Not really unique. I guess it just looks funny. It acts like the other ones, it just comes towards you. It is delayed for a moment before it starts flying towards you, but there are lots of other enemies that do that. For example, space butterflies and the tiki masks, the scourge tiki masks, scourge masks, whatever you call them. Let's go down here and throw our axe. Get some armor on so we don't get destroyed. Once that moves, any second now. Yep, any second now. He moves. There we go. That worked out perfectly. Lots of experience. There are lots of monsters in the Velts, but they don't individually they don't give a lot of experience. So it's not the best place for farming experience. Really want that jelly blade. That's why we came here. Nothing wrong with the gold sword. We're here for the jelly blades. We want big, strong weapons. That's why we're here. We have no crafting, we can't make our own weapons. Can't, can't make any armor, make up the difference, or use alternate playstyles here. We need to find big, strong weapons. Hopefully this jellyfish has it. Oh, and he's flying away. See you later, guy. Now I'm gonna wait for my axe for this. This is a good example of why the axe can be so good. Because this would normally be... It's gonna be very stressful to handle in melee. But with your throwing axe, it's not at all. And we actually did not get our Jelly Blade. What a shame. Going to the dungeon. You want to go to the dungeon for Riven Rath Scale. And also a decent drop rate of Obsidian Blades. So another good weapon to have. So our Gold Blade is plus 15 attack and Obsidian Sword is plus 30. So it's twice as good as our Gold Sword is. Problem is, of course, it is the dungeon. Dungeons. Notoriously difficult. It's not for the faint of heart. Lots of enemies are very dangerous enemies. Lots of health. Do lots of damage. I don't know what's wrong with this Minotaur. So we'll just kill him. Traps are annoying. The genies are particularly a problem. You can throw your axe at him. Not a good reason for the axe. You throw it at these guys. I want this treasure chest. So even though it's going to be tedious, wait in here to get in here. Kill his genie, take out his archer, get a treasure chest. We need that treasure chest. So we're gonna hang out a little bit more, shoot another throwing axe at the genie, either knock him back or kill him, then we can move in and get this chest. So ha! Ah, ha! Ah. Should push him back. There we go. Now we can speed up. Ouch. Not dodge the wrecking ball, of course, because that would mean that would mean we were good at this game. Take our Skellington. Didn't get experience for that archer, but that's fine. Not a big deal. What do we get from that? We got a Riven Wrath. Beautiful. An extra two attack. And five health. Extra two attack isn't huge, not game changing, but every little bit's gonna help. This genie out of here. We already invested so much in the genie. Try to finish him off. There we go. Grabs experience. At a certain point, I mean, after you almost kill a monster, you might as well finish him off and get his experience. That is obviously a mimic. Mimics have big old tongues hanging out. They're pretty. They stand out pretty easily. 
not hard to identify. Archers here are nightmare. I'm going to skip the skeleton just kills archer. He doesn't shoot us and we don't take unnecessary damage. We want to go back up and kill a skeleton because we want the experience. We have to be greedy here. We're going to go over him. Get him away from this trap. There we go. Want to be greedy for experience. Get as much as we can. Get level ups. Hopefully I threw that. Well, I was hoping to hit both. I don't think they would, that was possible. The way they were stacked. Still no obsidian sword. Disappointment. Come closer. Genies can be very tricky to fight in melee. And be careful if they are inside a platform like that and they begin to shoot, they will pop out of the platform. I don't know why they do that, but you have to just be aware. Oh, I totally missed that. That skips the guy, kills Archer. Archer genies are much easier to kill when there aren't archers helping them out. And I feel like I hit him, but I'm not gonna argue with the game. Genies are much easier to fight when they come towards you. Sometimes they like to just fly away from you. We did get an obsidian sword however. That's our new that's our new main weapon. Like I said, does double damage double the damage of our gold sword. We also got a fire starter, so we can cook all our food. That'll be very helpful. I do not like this at all. So let's try something fancy. What we're we gonna do? We're gonna go now. Hit that. There we go. Got all three. Archers can be very annoying. Normally you'd want to kill Mimics just for the diamond. They have a good chance of dropping diamond. But of course we don't care about that because we're not going to be doing anything with it. We cannot craft. So to us, diamond just turns into a very small amount of gold. Finding raw healing potions, just straight up health potions. Are one, this is one of the best finds you can get because you can't craft health potions. So just finding them is what you have to do. Make me very, very nice be a lifesaver. I don't kill the mimics anyway, because even though we don't need the diamond, we of course want the experience. More treasure chests, and looks like more dungeon. Go to the dungeon for some rings, because we do not have any rings. That's one reason why I recommend the bandicoot, because you start with the rings, so if you don't find any, it's not a big deal. But we didn't find any, so we're going back. We want rings, we want more damage. And can't get damage off anything we craft, so we have to find all our damage. Finding rings is an easy way to increase your damage. It feels weird to sell, you know, diamond and everything, but we don't we don't need it. We're not gonna be doing anything with it ever. We're gonna use this fire starter and cook all of our meats. Here we go, cookie cookie. We have a ton of food. We don't actually need all this food, but we're just gonna cook it anyway. Or until the fire gives that, whichever comes first. Oh, what's it gonna be? Oh, we made it, okay. That is far more food than you'll ever need playing this game. That's fine, we can sell our excess at the end. It's not, it's not going anywhere. Keep coming in here, killing the monsters, getting experience, and trying to get these treasure chests. That's the main thing, coming to the dungeon. Oh, there we go. That's very risky falling down there. Good chance I was going to get hit by the. Oh, and our axe killed way too much stuff. We missed out a lot of experience. And there's a boss. Well, isn't that fun? The dungeon boss is not as scary as he looks. So he shoots a single fireball and then flies towards you. You just shoot him. And watch out for his fireballs. And the one bad thing about him, the scariest thing, is he has a tendency to go into the ground or into the ceiling where you can't can't reach him. And then you might have problems. Other than that, he just kind of comes at you. He does do a lot of damage, so we want to watch out for that. Don't be afraid to use your speed up or your armor. Chug all your potions. It's unfortunate they have to use. Wow, he actually dodged that. It's unfortunate you have to use your. Can't combine your potions. Counts as crafting, so you have to use the far less far less efficient small potions. Will this guy come down here? <laughs> And then he likes to do silly things like turn sideways. But when you kill him, you get lots of experience. It's always worth killing, as long as you don't let him grope your face like I just did during that fight. 
That's where he took a ton of damage. Would have died if we weren't already prepared. He's a mentor down here. That's fine. Just goes to show you that even making mistakes, you can still do this run like that. See, just demonstrating more awful, horrible mistakes you can make. Obsidian sword, that's good. The obsidian sword doesn't have great durability, so finding the wrong one is a good backup in case we don't get any other weapons along the way. No good items there. Eat our food whenever we get a chance because we have so much of it. So it'll provide, provide a source of healing for us. And we can drop some garbage back here. Don't need Zyanders because we can't craft them into anything. So we can't craft legendary swords, crafting is not allowed. There we go, perfect throw. Oh, I didn't think he would shoot already. This genie. I'm just having an off day for this guide, aren't I? Oh, it just goes to show you, you don't have to have perfect play to get this. It's not a, it's not the hardest challenge in the game. Actually, if you get good finds, get that Minotaur off there, get that genie in the corner, and we can jump up and smack and punch him off. All right. I'll just these two. I did not touch them. That is I'm doing very poorly, aren't I? That guy's down. Just gotta play more. Just gotta play more conservatively here. Eat our food, top of our health. About these genies. Go back to the cave for all those delicious healing potions that the cave provides. All right, genie, shoot me. Come on. No, don't actually shoot me. I was being sarcastic. I was just telling a joke. Don't don't kill me. That's why genies are obnoxious, they do a lot of damage, shoot you from ranged. Oh, I don't need to land on them. Oh, that is a mimic, of course, of course that's a mimic. We are just taking so much damage for this. Unacceptable. If you play better than this, I promise, you have a much better time. And we still didn't get any rings. Back to the dungeon it is. Keep an eye out for any healing potions in the store. Oh, yes. Yes, please. You can buy whatever you need. Yeah, that does not count against crafting. The only rule is no crafting. So if you see something in the store you want, you can buy it. We don't need a cooked chicken. We have enough food. This is all just to get out of here. It's all money. Also, you're going to have lots of money from just selling everything. Alright, eat that so I don't get killed by an archer, and move on. Find some more potions in these treasure chests. I have to be very particularly careful of the genies now, because genies do 8 damage and we have under 8 health. Which means they'll kill us very quickly. By very quickly, I mean in one hit. And a boss. That's alright, I'm not too scared of the boss. Even though he did do massive amount of damage to us last time we ran into him. Like I said, he's not that difficult. Predictable behavior until he starts going sideways and into the ceiling and the roof and stuff. Other than that, he's a predictable guy. Looks scary though. He does some weird stuff involving the floor. Going into the floor. You don't want to let yourself get cornered though. It's a bad, bad idea. Ah, run him around. The difficult place to fight him. You ideally want. You ideally want somewhere with a large flat area, so you can just go straight away from him and hit him. We don't have that luxury right here. We just kind of have to dance around that little area. And I don't want to deal with you, so we're just going to throw the axe right in your face. Another archer's ring. That's unfortunate that we're not getting the useful rings for what we need. Which are, of course, the ring of rage and ring of power. Plus 8 attack, plus 5 attack, of course. We're gonna wait for our, this is a very hazardous situation. This archer, this archer, and this wrecking ball. So we're gonna wait for our throwing axe. There's no shame in waiting for your throwing axe. Now we can just run in here. I guess. Look out for this archer still shooting at us. We have this guy over here that was shooting at us. But we can take a second to drink this mystery potion. And it was mana, unfortunately. I don't know why our mana wasn't full. Must have just leveled up or something and got more maximum mana. Now we're going to kill this guy. We're going to do. We're going to run down here. Throw an axe in his face. Don't be concerned about doing a short-range axe, because the axe does pop out instantly. 
you throw it instantly, versus even with a small weapon you still have a short swing time. So don't be afraid of using your axe, or just waiting for your axe to reach charge. It's almost like I'm doing an axe tutorial, but it's honestly just such a good skill that once you get it, you should have used it. And that was obviously a fake rock. Like, I don't know what these look like. I have a specific video on fake rocks, you want to check that out, <laughs> on how to identify them so you don't take stupid damage like that. I have another munchie, try to get some healing off of it. Our snackums healing is not working out, fortunately. Hey, get over here. Minotaur, kill you. Also not recommend hitting minotaurs in the face. Same reason why you shouldn't hit bulls in the face. Wrecking balls are obnoxious, obnoxious traps. In case you haven't noticed playing this game. We really want to kill this genie. Except he is going into the sky, so see you later. See you later, buddy. Guess we're not going to kill him. And he's still going to shoot you, because why not? That's how genies work. Get these treasure chests, though. Nothing important in them. So it's time to bail before this genie comes back and kills us. Hello, guy. How are you? Since we already hit him, and he's being a pain, we're gonna finish him off. Alright, there you go. Thank you for flying into me. Take advantage of this moment to clear our inventory a little bit. Got a lot of, a lot of trash. Actually, I guess all of it's trash, so I don't really need to throw all of it away, because no matter what, we're not going to be using it. We're only selling it unless it's a fantastic weapon that we found. Let's get both these guys down here. Thorax. There we go. The strategies. And we got, we've got some health back, finally. There we go, that's what I'm... Um, that's what I'm talking about. Get some health. Go to the cave. Now we have obsidian blades, we have some levels. We can go in the cave, we can kill all the broodmillers. Get some more levels and get some health potions. Or sell everything, we do not need it. Not using any of this. We have no need, it's just temptation for crafting. The only thing we're going to keep is our obsidian sword as a backup, because this one's already down to 44 durability. Nothing wrong with having a backup weapon. Nothing for sale that we want, no. Now you can buy a bow, and that doesn't count as crafting. And then you can shoot the arrows you find. We do not find a lot of arrows. So, if you want to keep it around to shoot maybe some dangerous enemies like those genies, maybe having a bow in some of those situations would have been useful. You can keep that in mind as a as a backup weapon. I'm not going to do it, but you have lots of arrows that you found. Hey, uh, broodmother, if you have lots of arrows you can found, it's I mean you can do it. You're not going to be doing anything. you're not doing anything else with your money. You're never going to find enough health potions to buy to actually spend all the money you're getting. Do enough damage to kill these Brimillers rather quickly. We're going to take all our potions right away because we have lots of max health that we're not even close to it. And let him hit me. I could have easily dodged that if I just moved, if I just dodged backwards. It's alright, we're making lots of mistakes and we're still actually doing pretty well. 20 health isn't bad, we are level 30. So in spite of our horrible play, we're still doing alright something important to keep in mind, even, even if you make a lot of mistakes, consider where you are overall. And if you're not one health, no weapon about to die, then we can keep your morale up. We all have off days. Happens. Gotta take your situation, consider it as a whole, where you are, relative to what you want to do. Ooh, is that a health push? No health push. Okay. Oh, lots of enemies died though. Gotta get over here. Two. Some level ups. I said experience is very important because that's where a lot of your damage is coming from. Berserker Scarf and your natural skill ups, three levels. It's also why you should go for green attack during level up menu because you increase chance of gaining more of those stats. Green health is also good too. Seems like going to the caves and getting Lots of experience off the Brimillers is a tactic for a lot of these unlocks and runs. Get over here. Yeah, it's right, Brimiller. Killing them pretty easily now. 
the obsidian sword is about to break. Well, good thing we kept that back up, huh? So we'll keep this one until it snaps. I'll just grab a new one. Hey, bat. What's up? So remember, <laughs> remember, they hesitate. Moment of hesitation. They come at you, and they come at you very quickly. Not ah, no obsidian sword. No problem. Get in here. Dodge these guys. We can get them all lined up. Easier to kill them. There we go. That's what we want. Well, these guys lined up. I'm just going to axe this top row. And then the crater. We actually want to go to the crater because we want a laser sword. Because with no crafting, that's the strongest weapon you can find. It used to be by far the strongest game, strongest weapon in the game. But with the addition of the Flame of Hope, you can get some absurdly high magic stats, as well as your regular attack stat gets very high. And that makes the legendary swords even more powerful because it takes the firebrand, shoots a fireball, and you swing the sword. So it combines that both those high stats into one damage stat. If you combine that with a skill like magic weapons, you do heinous amounts of damage. Now legendary swords are contenders for best weapons, but it kind of depends on what your setup is, what stats you have, that whole thing. Be very situational. Oh, that would have been that would have been cool if I actually hit that. All right, all right, all right, butterflies. There we go. Luckily, the butterflies come straight at you, which isn't always a good thing. Well, it makes the uh, not killing any enemies run a little harder because they are very aggressive. But when you're doing melee and trying to kill them, it is. Actually, very helpful for them to fly directly at you. The bullets, they appear, and then they just hover for a moment, and then they go. They fly to whatever point you were at when the bullet appeared. So it's easy to dodge as long as you keep track of when the bullet appears, where you are in relation to that. And we immediately find a laser sword, that's very lucky. It's not uncommon just to never find laser swords. Which can be extremely frustrating. Oh, that was close. Poppy spacemen do a ton of damage, you do not want to get jumped on by these guys. They give decent experience, though. And you can tell we're getting. Oh, he's gonna jump? No, he did not jump over it. Ah, uh, I got too close to that guy. Activated him, made him jump. Have a snack while you're here. Get our health up, not for healing, just for health. Alright, here's the butterflies. See, all those bolts are going over ahead of where I was. That one's gonna come to me, right to me. We gotta. Gotta keep track of them. So it's a good strategy for fighting butterflies to keep track of their bullets and dodge them and just let them come to you. For melee, at least. Of course, ranged and magic, you just better strategy to shoot them. I'm pretty sure that axe should have hit them. Not a big deal. It just seemed like to me it went right through their heads. We still, we've gotten three archer rings, no other rings. We also got a total biscuit, which is very good fun. Total biscuit, of course, increases your max health and your maximum magic, which is most useful for characters using magic, but the maximum health is always useful. Especially because it also increases your current health, so it acts as a heal as well as a maximum health boost. Killing, oh, love the laser sword, just run around swinging, killing everything in one hit. But I think the laser sword's superior in most general situations, even to a very powerful Zyhander, because it swings faster, and you only need so much damage to one shot enemies. Once you're one-shotting enemies, what, what do you need more damage for? Of course for the boss, but then that makes the weapons diff better in different situations, which I like. I think it's there's no good to have one best strategy, because then everyone just uses that one best strategy and the game loses. It's not interesting anymore. Alright, this butterfly is stuck on the corner. They love to do that. It's stuck on the corner and then they do not move. They're trying to fly straight into you. And they ignore the fact that there's a giant wall in the way. Alright, this should be the last district, right? Yes. So it doesn't matter which store we go through. We're now approaching the Scourge Man tube, the final level. We have a pretty good setup. We don't have any rings, which is a shame. So we went to dangerous biomes multiple times and just never found any rings. I don't think we need to keep this obsidian sword as a backup. We have 81 swings, but just in case, being paranoid never hurt anyone. That's a complete lie. Being paranoid does hurt lots of people. 
But you know what I mean. Having a backup weapon. Better be safe than sorry. Oh, we don't need all this food, for sure. We don't need any food. Lots of money, nothing to buy, nothing really we would buy anyway. We have a couple shots of a laser crossbow. So just put that into our friend. Put that into that guy. Now we're going to clear... Oh, okay. Now we're going to clear a few levels of the Scourge. The Scourge's level has gotten much more difficult with, as of version 1.3. There are more enemies. I really thought we were going to hit him. Misclicked the dodge button so I didn't sprint into him. The addition of enemies, the increased number of enemies, the Scourge level is much more difficult. And also are more aggressive, they spawn up more quickly. So I do want to clear a few a few rooms of this before we go back and kill our Scourge Man. Another thing to note is that you're not going to be using any light shards. So you have to craft, not only do you have to craft a diamond pickaxe to get them, you then have to craft the light, the shards into the light crystal, the light crystals and light shards, wherever it goes. So you're not going to be doing that a lot, and this is a really awkward situation to fight him. I'm going to go back and clear no room then. So you're not going to be uh, using that to kill him. Using those. It's just not going to happen because you can't craft them. It's not part of the. Not in the cards, is it? There we go. Now we can go back and fight this guy. Alright, your laser sword. Does massive damage to poor Scourge too, man. He has no idea what hit him. You start hitting him this thing. He's a 112 damage a swing. He dodges bullets easily enough. Get on the platform. Avoid his face. You want to be outside his feelers. You do not want him to touch you. If he touches you, you're a dead man. All right, come on. Come on, Scourge man. Avoid his shots. Shots do five damage. He seems to shoot them more frequently now too. Clear some more space here. No problem having a nice comfortable amount of space to fight him. This is a lot of space here so we're gonna be fine. Sit in beat on some more. Just stay, just stay in front of him outside of his feelers. Hit him. Watch out for his shots. When he starts, when he moves his head that's how he telegraphs his attack. Just move back, avoid his shots, jump back in, do more damage. I was hoping to hit that guy. Now I'm going to be a pain in the butt. And Tiki Masks now. So annoying, because they see you from switch so further away, and they shoot you. They have to be careful, be very aware of Tiki Masks now in the last level. The worms and the spear guys aren't really that much, aren't big of a deal. They're easy to kill and avoid, as long as you don't jump on the worms. Tiki Masks are dangerous. That's the Quaylog run. The idea is melee is the easiest thing, easiest way to do it. You acquire a powerful weapon that you find in a treasure chest. Use any other supporting equipment you find in treasure chests, such as Riven Wraths or Rings of Power or Rings of Rages. Also, get as much experience as you can for level ups to increase your stats. And then by the last level, even without armor or craft items, you should have enough stats to kill the Scourge Man. And clear a little bit of the level because the Scourge level is much harder, but just be aware of that. So that's how to get the Qualog in version 1.3 of Magisite. Thanks for joining me, subscribe for more videos, follow me on Twitter. You guys know the deal, I'll see you next time, thanks for joining.